Waxu is still awesome. If you're currently bored with MMOs and are looking for something drastically different, then Wakfu may be what you're looking for. Whether you're a gatherer, crafter, merchant, or adventurer, you'll find your place in the world of 12. But it doesn't stop there. Secrets are hidden in the game world that unlock content. Plus, if you play Wakfu, you'll have something in common with Chris Farley. <laughs> Run for it! Run for it! But what's the difference between Dothus, Wakfu, and Waven? And what's this about an anime? Let's jump in. Combat is pleasantly easy to learn and gratifyingly difficult to master. Wakfu will show no mercy. That is, if you suck at games like me, there are four elements to master. Water. Earth. Fire. Air. Most creatures visually show which elemental type they favor. That hints which element may be their weakness. Moreover, position matters. If you are damaged at your flank, you are painfully reminded. Thus, Wakfu honors the player's intelligence by providing meaningful combat puzzles to solve. For example, this family of crustaceans places a hex on your characters that will automatically kill them after a few turns have passed. Thus, instead of playing defensively, like I tried, you must change your tactics to overcome various combinations of threats. Moreover, your skills can creatively synergize with each other that can create implicit combos that are so satisfying to execute. In particular, the archer, called Craw's Range, has a specialty skill that extends her range and busts DOT damage. So, or the druid class, called Sadita Shu, can add bonus damage whenever her pets are defeated. Yet, since you can summon self-exploding pets, you can see why Wakfu's combat seduced this player to play for nearly 166 days of their life. But synergies are just a drop in the bucket. Unlike most modern MMOs, in which combat feels little different at the beginning to what's provided at the end, Six months later, Wakfu will keep you on your toes, whether it be a monstrous sea creature, Wakfu's version of Team Rocket, a royal bird, or a giant slug. You'll always have your hands full. But where you fight keeps the anticipation in the forefront, on flying platforms, sailing ships, fiery factories, and interdimensional portals. So how do you keep up with all of these threats? Like in Monster Hunter games, your equipment is a reflection of what you defeated. The more difficult the creature, the better the loot. Moreover, each class has two pools of active skills, elemental and specialty. The former is your base kit that defines your build, while the secondary amplifies its effectiveness. But your tune's development extends beyond gear and abilities. If you loved earning your horse in Ocarina of Time, you'll appreciate the journey of securing your first mount in Wakfu. And if you love solving topographical puzzles in Guild Wars 2, then Wakfu also has you covered. Another strong point is Wakfu's quests. Now, storytelling may be a strange item to highlight, so hear me out. Most modern MMOs have forced stories that are so bad that players must cynically play through them. Which begs the question why MMOs try to have macro stories at all. Regardless, even if Star Wars The Old Republic or Final Fantasy XIV are generally regarded as leaders in the MMO space. So, you just want some help moving boxes, or...? Well, I wouldn't mind a hand. Their narratives still struggle because every player is the chosen one, while every other player is also the chosen one. Now, a lot of people say that Kelly is one in a million, and that's true, but it's also not true. Because, frankly, there are literally billions of people just like Kelly in the world. 
Wakfu takes a different approach. As early as the opening cinematic, you see a group of adventurers who are slain by Crying Ogrest. Immediately after the death of the adventurers, your tune appears. You've been reincarnated. One of them was your past life. You eventually find out that all adventurers in Wakfu are trying to restore balance by defeating this crying troll to put an end to the apocalyptic flooding, since it's his tears that originally flooded the world and split the landmass into 12 islands. The problem is that the world was created by the gods, and each class is a partial manifestation of a god. So your agency is existentially tied to the whims of your patron deity. Thus, since the world is constantly under Ogress' threat, of course, each adventurer has been chosen by the gods to defeat him because he destroyed what they, the gods themselves, created. But it goes even deeper. Just like yin and yang are not good and evil, so the forces in the game's universe, Black Fu and Stasis, aren't either. Each character is struggling to find their way between them. For example, Ogrest is crying as a result of being betrayed. Additionally, the first antagonist you encounter is in fact not evil. He's been oversaturated by stasis, and the plot is not to defeat him, yet to reintroduce him to balance. Additionally, you later realize that the very first NPC to help you in the tutorial is ultimately responsible for the destruction caused by Ogrest's tears. Between the inevitability of confronting Ogrest with the ever-present reminder that you are no ethical superior is a source of tension. <laughs> And if this feels overwhelming, that's okay, because I'm putting together a complete newbie's guide to Wagfu. But you may still be confused between the difference between Wagfu, Dofus, and Waven, plus the anime called Wagfu and the Dofus movie. I'll keep it short. On Kama, the publisher and developer of Wagfu is ultimately an animation company. This is why their art style and visual storytelling is top notch. The three MMOs are sequels to each other, all feature turn-based combat on square grids, and continue a story that is also being told by the anime and movie. So how do you play? How much does it cost? And can you catch up? Number one, do not use Steam. Instead, visit wakfu.com and download the launcher. From there, you can create your account, download Wakfu, and begin playing, all for free. But you may wonder if Wakfu is pay to win. Wakfu's monetization is between Dota 2 and Path of Exile. For example, you can add heroes to your group similar to Guild Wars 1. However, like a MOBA, heroes are on a rotation, so you may need to purchase access to one to always have them available. Secondly, you can purchase cosmetic skins and storage through the item shop, not direct power. However, if you want to add your own alts as heroes to your party and gain increased loot and experience, you can purchase a booster for less than $7, making it one of the most affordable MMO subscriptions on the market. But even then, you can trade in-game currency or premium credits, so you could earn all of these for free simply through playing. Thus, as this player wrote, Wakfu is still fun to play even for free. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more MMO content.